Well, a great afternoon from wherever you're watching from. We're what, what we call Nariri, Naliri. You can call it the National Livestock Research Institute. And we're in the farm clinic, Seeds of Gold. Well, this is the farm clinic edition. Like we said, so far we've done 24 farm clinics. And all these have been possible because of our great sponsors. We have had great sponsors like Bank of Uganda and what we call the Agriculture Credit Facility. Uh, great thanks to our great sponsors, Tanbik Bank, not forgetting uh, the NARO, not forgetting uh, NSSF, and a couple of other sponsors. The Daily Monitor and the Seeds of Gold, they make this. Now today, we are, uh, it's remarkably great. Such a facility in our country, we're looking at agriculture on a different spectrum, on an industrial scale. If you're one of those Ugandans who don't believe that farming can possibly change lives, there is a lot more to this you can actually do. Where we are today, we are going to understand the breeding of the dairy farm. How do we breed? How do we get to this kind of level? This kind of magnitude can only be possible if there is an intention of a conversation that comes from people who are embedded in research. Not only about research, even other sponsors and partners who believe in the vision of Seeds of Gold. I'm Andrew Chamagir, and we're live from the National Livestock Research Institute at Namulonge. But for now, let's have some information from one of our key sponsors, that is Bank of Uganda. Winnie says us something. Agriculture Credit Facility is a government initiative that was established in 2009 as a risk-sharing facility where government partners with the, the financial institutions that are regulated by Bank of Uganda and those are commercial banks, micro-deposit taking institutions, uh, and credit institutions. We also partner with the Uganda Development Bank. So the scheme was introduced as a, an intervention to bridge the financing gap. Um, we know that many of the financial institutions were not lending towards farmers or towards the, the, the agriculture sector because they deemed it very risky. So government decided to partner with the banks where they would contribute a portion of the finance. Uh, for the commercial banks and UDBL, government contributes 50% and they contribute 50% to the financing basket. The MDIs and credit institutions contribute 30% while government contributes 70%. And um, what is the main objective of the SEF? The main objective of the SEF like I mentioned, one is to bridge the financing gap, uh, to provide medium to long-term financing towards farmers uh, and agro-processors across almost the entire value chain. The other objective is to support the uh, transformation of the agriculture sector, focusing mainly on value addition and mechanization. How do we uh, help the farmers? How do farmers access? Access is through the financial institutions that I mentioned um, earlier. Why? Because they have the outreach, they have the branch, the branch network, and therefore we wanted to make it easier for farmers wherever they are to be able to access, to be able to, to walk in any financial institution of their choice and be able to benefit under this scheme. So a farmer can benefit through any financial institution I mentioned, through any commercial bank, through any micro-deposit taking institution, um, like Pride Microfinance, through credit institutions like Postbank and, 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 and some of them that you already know. What are the terms of, of, of SEF and how are they different from the existing financing that is available on the market? Like I mentioned, SEF provides medium to long-term financing. The maximum period we give a farmer is up to eight years. And it includes a grace period. That grace period provides relief for a farmer to be able to, one, uh, start the production before you can actually pay the loan. But even, for example, along the way, if you get challenges like what is happening now under COVID, you are able to get a grace period you're able to negotiate that grace period is up to three years so say for example if you got one year of grace uh, when you applied for the loan you are able to go and uh, um, request for additional grace period or additional relief period 
provided you are still within the three years. The other advantage is the interest rate. The interest rate under the agriculture credit facility is capped or up to a maximum of 12% per annum. It means that the farmer, for example, or agro-processor is able to uh, borrow at 1% per month as interest. <coughs> and uh, the other advantage also is on the facility fee. SEF capped all the facility fees. There are these other extra charges that were all consolidated under a one-off charge of 0.5% on the loan. And, and therefore, the, the borrower is able to not incur extra charges that now will make the cost of the finance expensive. We do finance everything from production. People who are engaged in crop farming, who are engaged in poultry farming, people who are engaged in beekeeping, people who are engaged in fish farming, uh, if you intend to buy machinery for, for on-farm activities, tractors and the like, and other agro machinery equipment, if you are engaged in value addition and you need uh, machinery for agro processing, we do finance that through the financial institutions that I mentioned. So we have financed a number of uh, agro processors and farmers who are engaged in all these activities. And uh, as a farmer, what do you need to benefit? All you need is to approach your financial institution of choice. But we do encourage, if you have a relationship with a bank, we do encourage that you start with those. One, because of KYC, know your customer. Banks are better placed to deal with you because they already have a relationship with you, as opposed to a working customer. But that doesn't stop you. If you qualify, you go through the bank of your choice, they will do what they call credit appraisal. And they will advise you on any other um, information that you need to submit for you to be able to benefit. If you can have what we call a business proposal what, or a bankable proposal, especially for the medium to large scale, you should be able to present that one on the basis of which the bank will do an assessment, they will come and look at your project, see what you have written, whether it actually uh, matches with what is on the ground, they will advise you on what you need to do, they will take you step by step and guide you on how best you can implement your project. Once the bank has found your project viable, then they will send your, your application to Bank of Uganda. Bank of Uganda will look at compliance, and by compliance, we are looking at the terms. Are they giving you the same terms as SEF? Is interest rate 12%? Um, um, is the loan period granted within the guidelines? Are they having um, either other charges that are outside the guidelines? So we look at all those things, and once we are satisfied, then we approve the loan, and the bank can go ahead and give you the money. Then we will reimburse 50%, or 70% depending on which institution is submitting your application. Now, we have some products that we have introduced under the SCF, again targeting um, the smallholder farmers. You may know that smallholder farmers constitute the biggest percentage of our farming community. So we wanted to uh, not exclude this group. So we went back and assessed the performance of the SCF and realized that Initially, we were focusing mainly on the large-scale farmers and value addition. And we were forgetting the SMEs, the smallholder farmers, the people who are actually own farm, producing and supporting these people who are into value addition. So we have introduced a range of products. One of them was the, the working capital component, where you are able to be supported to acquire inputs for primary production, like seedlings, like um, pesticides, and even a, a bit of working capital for, to meet operational um, expenses on the farm. So as under SEF, you are able to acquire financing for all of that. But then, most importantly, and that happened in 2018, we introduced a component called block allocation, targeting mainly the smallholder farmers or the micro borrowers. Now, what is block allocation? Block allocation is where a smallholder farmer who may not have the collateral that the financial institutions usually are looking at, and, and by that I mean the land titles, 
or the buildings for you to pledge as collateral. You are able to get financing using other, what we call other alternative um, collateral requirements. And we know that some of these banks have already been uh, using them. So we wanted them to um, support the SMEs a lot more. Look at the farmer. Look at the cash flows of the farmer. Look at the credit history. How has he been able to borrow in the past and pay? Look at his uh, savings culture. Look at other things like shuttle mortgages. If I don't have a land title, can I be able to use something else to pledge as collateral? So the bank is, is, um, can use that and extend financing of up to 20 million to a farmer to acquire what we would call unsecured loan. So that is a very, very important uh, product that we have, that we encourage the smallholder farmers to take up, that we encourage the banks to utilize and be able to support our farmers and um, help their um, livelihoods, but also increase food security. Um, secu uh, collateral, like I mentioned, there is that component that you don't have uh, to have a land title, for example, or these other very expensive collateral requirements, but you can use um, other alternative um, requirements. But somebody might ask, do I need, if I don't fall under block allocation and I want more financing outside or beyond 20 million, what can I pledge as collateral? The collateral requirements remain the same. So the financial institutions are supposed to assess you based on the risk profile of the project, and they will require the collateral to be able to secure this loan. Remember, it is a refinance loan. The loan has to be paid back so that the other farmers can also be able to um, benefit. But also because half of that money is also a contribution from the banks. And so it is important that this loan is secured. So yes, you'll be able to provide security. The conventional security requirements that the financial institutions will ask but also it is an engagement that you will have with them. So issues of security, you, they, they, you will have a discussion with the bank. They will um, advise you on what security requirement that they will need that is adequate to provide um, security for their loan that they are going to give. If you are, however, if you're going to borrow for acquisition of machinery, acquisition of plants for processing, the primary security is the machinery that we are financing. So that gives the other added advantage for the SCF. I'm Clinic Edition. We are at uh, Naliri, that is uh, the National Livestock uh, Research Institute. And um, this is mainly about uh, the theme this year. We are looking at what we call a climate uh, smart farming in the wake of COVID-19. And this place covers quite a lot of things. There is a lot here we don't understand. There is a lot we have seen today. Possibly we need to understand it. And uh, what does the place um, look like on the other days? And what is the instance of this place? What is the mantra behind this whole setup? Now, joining me today, I'm going to be talking to Dr. Moses Mwesigwa. Doctor, good to see you, and it's an honor to be here with you today. Nice to meet you, sir. Uh, j j just come here. Let's have a conversation, doctor. Yes. So, um, one, I really want to appreciate you and the team for the work well done here. Yes. Um, this is a great, great place. But for starters, doctor, first introduce us to yourself. I could call you a doctor, and someone maybe doesn't understand the magnitude of that you cover. Okay. Um, introduce yourself, and you tell us more about this place. Uh, good evening, viewers. Mm. Moses Mwes was my name. Mm. I'm a veterinary doctor by training, mm. but with a PhD in agribusiness, all from Macquarie University. Okay. I welcome you, the viewers, on this smart clinic, farm, farm, farm clinic, mm. where we do smart agriculture for bumper harvest. Okay. Now, about this place, this is National Livestock Resources Research Institute, mm. based in Nachesasa, Mm. a few kilometers off Namurenga Road. Mm. It is one of the research institutes under NARO. NARO has 16, mm. of which nine are zono, but this is the only national research institute concerning livestock. Wow. Now, this, this institute has five programs. 
We have the entomology program, mm -hmm. which deals with bees, and it's also of late, it's doing research on the next pandemic of Rift Valley Fever. Oh. We have the bioscience program, which deals with the all diagnostics. We have the beef and meat program, that one deals with all beef and meat animals. Mm. Then we have the vaccinology program, that one is at the helm of uh, de developing the anti-tick vaccine, mm. developing the, the swine fever vaccine, and developing the foot and mouth disease. And then the diary program which I had hmm. is the one that is going to be the one. That's what we're talking about today. Yes. Now, Doctor, that is, th that makes a lot, th there is something you've hinted about. Yes. The Rift Valley, what, pandemic? The next pandemic, now, yes. right now we have COVID. Yes. Now the next pandemic, uh -huh. World Health Organization has yes. predicted it to be, to be by Rift Valley fever. Okay. Now that one is a disease that uh, gets animals okay. and humans called asnosis. Wow. And uh, we have our sons here mm. doing research on the Chulex mosquito, uh -huh. which is the biggest transmitter of, of the, the Rift Valley fever. A lot has been done in the human zone malaria mm. by Anopheles mosquito, mm. but now this is Chulex mosquito, wow. which is undertaken by our science here. Now, that is, that is a conversation. We'll have some at the, because uh, given that the pandemic has actually hit us so heavily. Yes. Now, we're talking about the bumper harvest. This program, by the way, if you're watching it from wherever you're watching from, it is meant to show you the will to farm, and not only that, yes. the, not only the will to farm, but to bridge the gap mm. of you getting into agriculture, but you farm smartly, and not only that, that you can make the bumper harvest we're talking about. So, Doctor, what we're seeing here at diary farms already in here. Yes. But where does this start all from? Oh, thank you very much. Mm. Now, I know farmer know something about diary farming, mm. but like... Rudimentarily. rudimentarily <laughs> but yes. like Nelson, Nelson Mandela said, yes. that the people who will be illiterate in the future yes. shall not be those who cannot read and write, oh, yes. but it will be those who cannot learn, yes. relearn, uh -huh. and unlearn. Un un <laughs> now, I want to tell you about uh, here, yes. we have three breeds of cattle mainly. Mm. We have the Viking Jersey, okay. we have the Frisian, mm -hmm. and the Ayshire. But f for the farmer, mm. if you are to select a breed, mm. that one is very important. Yes. Now, generally, a diary animal is supposed to be triangular or wedge-shaped when you just look at it. Oh. Like you see all these animals. Uh -huh. If you are to do a triangle, it will fit. Yet the beef animals are for what? Are for the uh, 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 rectangular. Okay. If you just look in the general picture. Yes. The another thing, you have to know that at all, all cattle on earth, mm don't have teeth here on the upper jaw. All, All animals cattle. on earth. <laughs> so the question should be, how do they feed so that I should gain from the animals? Oh, yes. Now, because they don't have teeth on the upper jaw, uh -huh. they use the tongue to wrap the grass uh -huh. and the lower teeth cut. That uh -huh. means where your gumboot stop on the legs, yes. that should be the minimum height for the grass whereby the tongue can wrap and the teeth can hurt. Okay. But you find farmers who expect to get bumper harvest, mm. but the farm is like a football pitch. Oh yeah. So in that case, they will be busy, but not in the business. Now you ask the me- The farmers. The farmer, mm, you can sense. be busy, mm. but not in the business. Uh -huh. So you need to get the knowledge that will make you busy and but in the business. But you harvesting, yes. Mm. Or not actually very busy, but in the business. And that no, 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 that's, that's what we need. Not very busy, not very busy but in business. But in business. Yes. So there you must select uh -huh. the best breed. Mm. Now, I want to tell you, mm. if you are to benefit from the diary, mm. the best breed yes. should be the Viking jersey. Because Do we have the, the Vikings here? Yeah? So the Viking jersey is this one, okay. this one, and uh -huh. this one. Why the Viking jersey? Mm. They are relatively small in the number. Okay. They give relatively a lot of milk, wow. and that milk is a very high quality milk. It's why should I say why quite a milk? Mm. Because you need one liter of jersey milk to make one kilogram of yogurt. Wow. Yet for the Frisian, uh -huh. this one, yes. you need the three liters to, to make, make one kilogram of yogurt. So you can see the economics involved. This is better. <laughs> this is better. Yes. And this one mm. can eat almost a, 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 a pickup of grass. Wow. Yet this one, you need the three of these. So if you are to talk smart, oh. you must be able to, to break To make even. the economics between the breeds. Yeah, mm. but again, you must do the economics mm. of how to get this. Mm. Now, I want to introduce you to the breeding program That's what we, want we are do. doing here at yes. Nachesasa. Mm -hmm. a, a cow, mm. naturally, 
gives one calf per year. Per year. Because, the, because the gestation period is nine months. Two. Then you give two months of, 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 of drying. Yes. But the technology we are doing here mm. is in vitro fertilization and then embryo transfer. Now, what is that in English? Now, little English. Little no. English. Thank <laughs> yes. you very much. Now, be, be, with this technology of in vitro fertilization, mm. that means you inseminate, you inject the cow uh -huh. with a particular hormone, mm. it produces many eggs. Okay. Then you harvest the eggs, uh -huh. go to the, to the microscope, okay. separate the eggs, okay. mature the eggs, and after they have matured, you transfer them to the animal. Do we have all that technology right here? All that technology is here. Okay. Uh, it is a very sophisticated, yes, but with the expertise we have here, mm. it becomes it, almost, it's, it's easy, an everyday. almost easy. Mm. How is it done? Mm -hmm. After harvesting the eggs, a cow, one cow mm -hmm. with this technology, can give you 100 calves. Come on. Uh, yeah. Doctor, <laughs> wait a minute. Ladies and gentlemen, we are talking about uh, climate smart farming. A cow should produce one calf per annum. But now, according to the technology Dr. Mwesigwa is talking about here, one cow can give you a hundred calves a year. Yes. With the technology here. Yes. But is it affordable, doctor? Yeah, it is very affordable. I wanted to first take you to... Please, take me through. It's now the, very exciting. The facts. Yes. Now, what we do, after harvesting the eggs, mm -hmm. we, we go to the microscope, mm. we separate each egg, mm -hmm. and we get a light sperm. Okay. That, what I mean by elite sperm, that mm. is very high quite a smart, mm. uh, very quite a sperm. Mm. Let me bring it closer to closer the Closer to the people, yes. I am a Muganda by tribe. Yes. But you can find some families mm. where the, the Muganda mm. is tall, mm. is clever, mm -hmm. produces twins, mm. and lives up to 90 years. Yes. Now, in terms of selecting the animals, we shall select a bull with the very high qualities. Now, after separating the eggs, mm. on the, on the, I'm calling them eggs, but yes. actually the word is For purposes to understand, yes. Yeah. We fertilize each egg uh -huh. with the anaelite sperm. Wow. With anaelite sperm. High quality. Yeah. yeah. Of yeah. Rate, now, our success rate is at 50%. Okay. But you have a platform mm. which can produce 200,000 embryos. Okay. Here. Yeah. That means with a success rate of 50, we must produce 400 such wow. that 50 survive. Hmm. Now, after fertilizing each of those, mm -hmm. you can realize that what, that will be the quickest way of, give, of getting many animals yes. that shall be given to the farmers. To the farmers. Then secondly, mm. in the natural setting, mm. artificial insemination, one straw, after fertilization, you get one calf. Yes. But for us here with the technology we have, mm. with, one f with one straw of semen, mm -hmm. it can fertilize 50 oocytes. Wow. So you can see the economics involved. The and this research, mm. actually this technology, we are, actually it's no longer research, mm. but it's we are technology. undertaking. It's already on a pilot. I, I, yeah. Mm. It's going to save this country 600 billion every year, money which would go into importation mm. of beef mm -hmm. and dairy animals. Now, um, uh, b b before we go there, now we're talking the economics. Yes. This, with all the breeds you, you, you get from, from this kind of technology, mm. are they disease resistant? And how do you go about the diseases that come with Because technology, of course, comes with a little bit of turbulence. Yes. And diseases is one of them. Mm. And I would like to know, with the current statistics, how much does the country lose mm. in terms of diseases that attack livestock, basically, in the country? How much do we lose? And with what you've said, we will save with this technology. How much are we losing currently? Oh, thank you very much. Mm. I'll start with the tick-borne diseases. Mm -hmm. This country loses 3.6 trillion every year Whoa. in terms of interventions related to tick control okay that is 3.6 trillion That's and that is only on the monetary side uh -huh. but the psychology yes. the, 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 the torture you get mm. after losing a bull you know that one is not measured in yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, monetary it's terms yeah. that is one secondly you, you realize that the cattle markets uh -huh. have been closed for the last four years, True. especially in the cattle corridor areas. Yeah. That means farmers are no longer getting income. But, and that is mainly because of foot and mouth disease. Mouth disease. But with the intervention here, mm. this is the only institute in Uganda. Mm. I can tell you that next month, we, 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 our science here mm. came up with a vaccine okay. that will work on ticks only here. Okay. Then, we have scientists working on foot and mouth disease. 
still here still here wow. and w when you look over there mm. there is a factory being constructed yeah. where the vaccine is going to be rolled out mm. soonest wow. and that will be helping the farmers in terms yeah. of fmd yes. said that people can open their market yeah. and even for smart agriculture so that they can access the international markets now you talked about this uh my dear farmer i'm very interested i'm very excited because now i know i can become a smart farmer yes. when i get all this mm. now i want to understand after the embryo is all done and all that happens yes how does now a farmer access this kind of breed is it accessible on the market and if it's going to be accessible will it be affordable yeah. if it's going to be affordable i'm looking at the sense of feeding it are we going to feed it the usual water and uh, the usual grass? So we have again now to buy the silage from the other researchers. Uh, thank you very much. Mm. Now, if you are to, 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 to benefit from agriculture, mm. you should look at diary as a value chain. Okay? Ah. And, and what I mean uh, in this, a farmer can be benefit uh -huh. as a donor uh -huh. of an elite indigenous cattle, uh -huh. which can give us an egg, uh, an egg uh -huh. that we can use in embryo transfer. Okay. Or the farmer will benefit at the, sorrow, at the owner of the surrogate mother, whereby you have your old animal, old. but we bring an elite embryo and we implant it there. Yes. A farmer can be involved in the agriculture value chain mm -hmm. by just growing pastures okay. or making, making hay or making silage uh -huh. so that you feed into this. So there are various ways where a farmer can chain. join mm. along the value chain. That makes a lot of yeah, sense. And I can tell you mm -hmm. that this delivery chain in the, here in, in, in Nachesasa, mm. it has 37 platforms on the segment. Where a, of value chain. Of a value chain. Break them down for me, doctor. I'm very excited. Yeah, now. for example, we have the embryo platform. Mm -hmm. We have the... That the, is where we take the embryos and we, we raise we, we, we yes, them? Yes, yes. Uh -huh. We have liquid nitrogen, uh -huh. which preserves the embryos. Okay. So a farmer can work by, by distributing this liquid nitrogen. Mm. We have the pasture, mm -hmm. which is divided into hay mm. and silage. Mm. Then we have the zero waste system, mm. whereby I can economically say that cow dung mm. is better than milk. Because oh. from cow dung, mm -hmm. we get over 11 products. Cow dung? Yes, from cow dung. <laughs> we, we get over 11 Wait products. right there. This is NTV. Uh, well, uh, it's called what we call the Seeds of Gold a Farm Clinic. We are at Naliri. Dr. Mwesugo just said that you can get more benefits from cow dung than milk. We have all grown up, you know, rudimentarily knowing that, of course, milk is the big product. We can actually get cheese, butter, yogurt, and all that. Now he's breaking it down to us. If you're one of those farmers who want to get into smart bumper harvest, please get a pen and a paper and let's break it down. Check it away, doctor. Okay, thank Cutting you very much. Those. Now, now, this is an area mm. where a farmer needs mindset change yeah, huh. to do agriculture as mm. a business. Mm. The money you get from cow dung products, mm. it is written Bank of Uganda. Yeah. Even the money you get from Miric, it's written Just, Bank of yes. Uganda. So money is money as mm. long as you're not stealing it. Yeah. But coming down to cow dung, mm. It, it, it helps to subsidize milk. There are times when milk cannot be sold. Yeah. For example, when they said total lockdown, no movement. Yeah. Farmers could not you transport their milk. Yes. Mm. Then there are sites when they say milk should not be sold because it has uh, foot and mouth disease could yeah. be there. Yeah. But with the cow dung, you can get 11 products. I can tell you some Break of them. Break them down. For example, <laughs> yes. you can use cow dung as manure. That is ordinary. Yes. Then you, here, mm. from cow dung, we, we make biogas and we pack in the cylinders. Biogas and, 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 and someone bio can gas, buy it. Biogas from cow dung, we pack it in cylinders. Those, when you go to a petrol station, you get LOPG. Yes. That is liquefied ga for gas. That's from petroleum product. Yes. But now this one is from biogas. Biogas. And we pack it in cylinders uh -huh. and we use it at home. Yeah. The only challenge we still have, mm. I'm not calling it a problem, mm. just a challenge, yeah. is that to, we are more to make sure that we get a technology that yeah. will compress that gas okay. so that it is heavy in the cylinders. Okay. Then, from liquid gas, we get bioelectricity. Now, bio that, that bioelectricity mm. is used to run a generator which produces 75 kilovoltage amps. Doctor, that can run an entire village. Yeah, the, the entire village, because here, it, it, it gives, if somebody was paying Umeme, yes. would be paying six million every month. But and you already cover it here, with all these kind yeah, of facilities. And, uh, it is cow dung that milks the cow, because the, 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 the milking machine yeah, it's, uses it's power, mm. the laboratories there we use, use power. Wow. So, so and, and that is an ecosystem that, that is supporting each other's department. Yeah, it is a, and, and it is the, I was soon telling about the products yes. we get from liquid, we yes. get liquid soap, 
from manure from cow dung from cow dung doctor we get an, <laughs> we get animal feeds like parrots for yes. rabbits and for pigs we get the growth media mm. for mushrooms mm. So from but are these done? things on the market from 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 here? Because I would love to be at home, and I'm using the gas from the uh, from a research institute like this. I'd like to wash or bathe with soap from this kind of an entity because that is how I can support Bubu. Yeah, thank you very much. Mm. Now the uh, the challenge we have with the policy issue. Okay. Our issue is to 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 produce products, yes. prototypes, yes, that will go for other people to do it. Okay. Our to mandate is to scale them, them up. So mm. whoever wants to learn about how they make biogas. Mm pack it in cylinders, mm. how to get the media for growing mushrooms, yes. how to get liquid soap, how to get shampoo, mm. how to get uh, pesticides. They and should pellets. come here mm. and we teach them how to do it. Okay. They may not be yet on the market mm. because that is not our mandate, yes. but at least we have the prototype and we give that information free of charge. Wow. I, the six million I told you about mm. is that we, we are stuff. producing because right now this cow shed mm. is for meant for 300 animals. Yes. But now we are operating at half capacity mm. of 150. Mm. That's when we are producing six million. I oh. mean six, we are saving six million from what would be with yes. But if we are to, to have full, full capacity, capacity, that would be 12 million. Per month? Per month. Wow. Another thing which you want to tell the farmer mm. is to mindset change. Mm. That land is not wealth. What is wealth then? It is what you do on land mm. that will make it wealth. Now, you see, doctor, there is a mindset that m for me to be a very good farmer in this country, yes. I should have hectares and hectares of land to be, you know, taken seriously as a farmer yes. at that kind of scale. If one has like two acres, for starters, can they do something of this magnitude? Like you have this, this kind of cow, I, I've forgotten the breed. Viking jersey? The, the, the jersey. Yes. Like I can have three jerseys and, 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 I, and I start off with that one. Now, let me start it from, uh, mm. from, the, from first principles. Yes. Land is not wealth. Mm. It is what you do on land that makes it wealth. For example, mm. this shed, mm. which is meant for 300 animals, mm -hmm. is on 90 meters by 45 meters mm. where the 300 animals are. Wow. Uh -huh. Secondly, the grass to feed your animals mm. does not have to come from your farm. If in the value chain mm. you can buy hay and mm -hmm. silage from other people and come and feed your animals. Okay. So the, the, the mindset should be opened. Like you, you, you need, need other people in the value chain. Yeah, you need other people in the value chain okay. to grow the grass for you. Uh -huh. And also you should have selected the best breed. For example, the Viking jersey, mm. this one is you see. Yes. For example, this one, 0, 0, 03 to 60. Mm. It produces 27 liters. Yet this is the first parity. I Wait mean, the, it's producing for per day. Per day. And it's producing for the first time. Okay? Wow. That means by the time it reaches the third time, mm. it may be maybe 35. Actually, when you look at these animals, the one that is giving us least milk uh -huh. is 18 liters per day. So wow. if you have two animals uh -huh. and they're giving you maybe an average of 20 liters, that mm. is 40 liters. Two animals, 40 liters. That is good money. Now, if you say, because we are, we are talking now real economics. The economics. If yes. you are selling each liter at 2,000 and you are producing 40 liters from mm. two animals, that is 80,000. Yes. Now, a boda boda, yeah. motorcycle, yes. bajaj, yeah. a new one, yes. costs 7 million. Mm. But these two, crosses mm. just these are pure but the crosses mm. could be seven million could buy those two wow and, and now if you buy those two and they give you eighty thousand every day now a border border for the last two years in the lockdown no border border can make eighty thousand but economically locked up yeah yet a small man can steal your border border yes <laughs> yet stealing these two animals mm. you need the rory you need the people to help <laughs> you so the mind is locked mm. so which should D doctor when you talk about the mindset change I, I i really love this conversation yes what do we need to give our farmers and, and, and this is not only the farmers mm. countrywide our mindset is so much on the survival mentality yes can we what do we need to do to change it that it can actually look at things the way you're actually articulating them now okay thank you very much for that question now mm. When I talk about mindset change, yes. people should learn to work. Okay. And people should be ready uh -huh. to become what they don't want to become uh -huh. in order to become what they should they become. Okay. So you, the only they need to that, get dirty so that yeah, they can you, be you rich the way they see. But still, because t uh, work for these animals, mm. you can choose that between the 6 mm. and the 11 a.m., I'll make sure, look for the grass, mm -hmm. cater for my animals, mm. have the phone number for the doctor, mm. and when the doctor comes, I pay him yeah. such that whenever I need him, 
he's available. He's, he's available. And the guy of Silage is also doing yeah. his best. Th this is not a, a dirty job. Mm. All in the morning, I'm working in the animals. Mm. But am I dirty? You're not. I'm not you're dirty. You're not. And you're making money. And farming is not for the, for the people who mm. are not educated. Yeah. And I'm encouraging the educated people mm. there should go into this business. Mm. That's the only way they'll be able to provide employment mm. for other people along with the value chain. Now, Doctor, um, as we're finalizing this conversation with you, as I go to another person to talk to, yes. I want to know if, if now these breeds are already here, mm. if a farmer wants to get one or two, do they still have to come here? Uh, yeah, of late, mm. you, you don't have to come here if mm. you want the embryo. Okay. Actually, we are working with the network of over 60 farmers. Okay. What the farmers need to do, mm. they sign a memorandum with us, mm -hmm. they prepare their animals there, mm -hmm. it's, they, they all are the local ones. Okay, yes. Then we, 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 we make a memorandum, mm. the, we, we come, mm. we implant mm. the, 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 the embryo there for you, mm -hmm. at, at the same cost, you know, with the artificial insemination, yes. they, they inseminate, it doesn't conceive. Oh, yes. But for us, at a minimum cost, just cost to recovery, uh -huh. not business. Yes. Because this is the government because institute. Government entity. We shall come mm. and implant the animal, mm -hmm. then we just wait for one year, and you get a pure breed. Then we, may, we give after services, mm. backup services, yeah. to help you. Because here we have all the expertise, wow. like I said, the vaccinology, yes. the bioscience, and everything. So farmers there, dairy farming is the way just get yourself fixed uh -huh. along with the value chain uh -huh. and there will be in business wow the conversation is still ongoing we're still at nariri the it's remarkable the information doctor has dr Mwesigwa. i'm blown away believe you me <laughs> if you're one of those ugandans who love to actually understand and tap into this great wealth of knowledge yes. well just go to nariri website and get more of this conversation but again we are still learning quite a lot. We are still going to talk to other doctors who understand this, but um, one thing that is very, very clear is one, if we can only tweak our mindset and we take it from what we usually call uh, the Juakali way of doing business or looking at uh, agriculture from a perspective of doing business, because if one cow can give you 80,000 per day just from, just from milk, just one, and if you can add on to the issues of... Um, you understanding and learning the dynamics of the of the liquid soap of the biogas and all that you can create a, a cycle an ecosystem that is self-supportive at all layers the conversation is still ongoing and uh, i really want to thank our sponsors to this that is bank of uganda not forgetting stand big bank nssf and our key partners that is uh, the narrow and nmg it is the farm clinic edition so far we have made a 24 uh, farm clinics around the country in Imbale, in Imbarara, in Serere, in Hoima, and of course in Kampala and Mukono, and we're still ongoing. This is a conversation you and I just need to understand it. So I'm going to talk to another doctor. Um, like he said, we have experts here who are dealing with quite a lot. I'm just going to take a walk and um, I will meet this doctor. But for now, let's get some more information from one of our key sponsors, and I'll be back shortly. It's still the farm clinic, Seeds of Gold. NSSF recently launched the voluntary membership saving uh, scheme. Basically, this uh, saving platform gives an opportunity to workers and employers that are not covered under the mandatory provisions of the NSSF Act to voluntarily save for their retirement. There are two categories of uh, customers that this scheme targets. One, former members of NSSF. By former members, I mean former contributors. For one reason or the other, a member who was formerly uh, uh, serving with NSSF uh, dropped out of employment and they are doing their own private business, but they are still earning. So we give them an opportunity to continue saving voluntarily on their previous accounts because their accounts with NSSF do not close. The second category of people that we target under this scheme are the employers who are employing less than five people. As we all know, that uh, it's by law that any employer who is uh, employing more than five people is supposed to pay NSSF for their staff. But under this voluntary saving scheme, even those employers that are employing less than uh, five people, the scheme gives them an opportunity to save for their staff. Joining this scheme is absolutely free. Uh, what a member needs to do, or a company needs to do, is to show interest. A member can visit any of our branches or they can get 
to us on any of our social media platforms. Even still, we are doing whatever that we can to reach out to all those members who were in formal employment previously, but have now gone out to start uh, earning on their own. So we show us the interest, then we shall have to get back to you and uh, have you registered on board. Uh, then the employer, if uh, you're having less than four people, rather less than five people, you just have to get onto our website and have a self-registration. All contact any of our branches, all visit us on any of our social media platforms, then we shall have you registered. Currently, we have uh, over 24,000 members that have sub subscribed to this uh, saving scheme, and it's growing every day because Ugandans have embraced the, the spirit of saving, and they are taking it upon themselves, at least to plan for their retirement. The benefits of joining this scheme are enormous. Uh, one, at least there's a peace of mind. One knows that at least I am saving for my retirement. At the point of retirement, at the point when I'm no longer productive anymore, I have a fallback plan. I have a replacement income that will enable me to go through the expenses of uh, old age or sustaining my life. So it is really, really, really good that uh, we start saving at this moment. The other, uh, ben one of the benefits, uh, another benefit is uh, there's, there's at least a flexibility in the way we, we conduct our business. We've made it very easy for our members to pay under this scheme. They can pay as little as 5,000 shillings and they can pay as many times as they wish. We don't restrict any member. So it is small, small steps uh, with different uh, saving aspirations and slowly by slowly a member will have to get there. Then there's also a very big return, a very good return on uh, the, the savings that a member has made. We have also made it very convenient for our members to pay their contributions. One can pay using their phone, using uh, the NSSF Go code of star 254 hash, all the usual star 165 and star 185 for MTN and Airtel respectively. The moment you pay, your account is immediately uh, credited and you'll get a notification to show that at least your savings are growing. So on a regular basis as you pay, you still track your savings and you know how you're progressing. Like other years, even this year, we've partnered with National Media Group through their Seeds of Gold and uh, the farm clinics to reach out to the farmers out there. We've statistics show that uh, a big percentage of our members, once they are paid uh, contributions, the, the, the contributions from NSSF, they go into agriculture. Some have used their money well, and they've seen uh, their business, agribusinesses grow. So we are coming in as NSSF to encourage those farmers that have not embraced the NSSF voluntary saving scheme to come on board and start saving voluntarily. Even those that got their benefits and used them wisely, we still require them or request them to come on board and continue serving because they are still living, they are still earning, so it is important that they save for the uncertainties that might come. We are also giving financial literacy uh, lessons and tips to these farmers on how they can grow their businesses and how they can progress. We also urge the farmers out there to embrace e-farming as it's the theme this year, that e-farming is, uh, is the way to go. Things have changed and we are no longer doing business there we used to do. So those farmers that have gotten their savings from NSSF and they put them to good use, please spread the good gospel of uh, the benefits one gets once they put their money into good use, especially the money that, got from, that you got from NSSF. We know that there are many people out there who would also wish to join but are not under the category that I've uh, mentioned, especially the informal sector. Statistics show that uh, 15 million Ugandans are the ones that are working, but out of the 15 million working Ugandans, 11 million of them are in the informal sector would wish to tap into that market and have everyone in the informal sector come in and join and start saving. Uh, but we are restricted by the, the, the law under which we are working. NSSF is, however, as an organization, we are not seated. We are engaging the different stakeholders and the different policy makers, at least to try and uh, uh, pass the uh, 
the bill into law so that we can have uh, this uh, market of informal sector also come in and start contributing. As an organization, we are ready. We've had a lot of technological enhancements and we are ready to tap into that market. So I urge uh, people in the informal sector to, to hold on a little bit as we finalize to have them uh, come on board. I want to appeal to everyone out there that retirement or old age will catch up with any of us at one moment. So how prepared we are is what makes the difference. Please don't retire into pro poverty. NSSF Voluntary Savings Scheme is the solution and you're all welcome to come and join. You can reach us out to us on any of our social media platforms or on our toll-free number. Thank, thank you very much. It's Seeds of Gold, uh, Farm Clinic Edition. This is our 24, 25th edition, and we are at Naliri. This is the National Livestock Research uh, Resources Research Institute. Where we are earlier on, we talked to Dr. Mwesigwa, and Dr. Mwesigwa made it much more clear that you don't need a big space to start off dairy farming. And today, where we are, we have quite picked from his wealth of knowledge. She has shocked me. You know, we, we were all used to the notion that you get um, a calf per annum. Now here they're changing all that. They're actually going beyond 100 calves per annum. So my dear farmer, wherever you are, I really want to thank you for being a part of this conversation. But Kwanzaa, we need to understand. Now for him, he was speaking from an uh, industrial scale. Um, Machezu was telling us that, well, we need to do it the different way. But it was a little bit heavy. Now, for us who want to start small as farmers, we need to understand the dynamics. How do these things work? Just so you know that this program is brought to you by our key sponsors, that is Bank of Uganda under the Agricultural Credit Facility. We have NSSF, we have Narrow Odia, we have Narrow, and we have um, Stan Big Bank. And our partners, we have uh, the Nation Media and we have what we call Narrow. Joining me to have this conversation now, for us, the starters, if you want to do this business, when you want to start small, I'm joined by Dr. Walusi Mbiyusufu uh, to take us through. Doctor, uh, it's, I'm, I'm shocked, I should tell you this. My father's always bragged that we don't need very many heads of cattle to, you know, make it in this country. What you do here brings it to reality. So, Doctor, one person uh, just here on, 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 on our feed has asked a couple of questions, and these questions, you're going to be the person to break it down for us. Okay. Now, there is one person here says that, um, one, how can I start a small dairy business with this kind of cows? So let's start with a small business. How do I, me as Andrew, okay. I want to start a farm, okay. but um, I have possibly one of these cows. How do I go about it? Now, assuming mm. you've personally taken a decision. Yes. Let me go for dairy. Yes. And you want to start small. Uh -huh. And ideally, you should start small. Yes. Now... Number one, mm. how many acres of land are you talking about? I'm talking about uh, two acres. Two acres. Mm. That's very good. Mm. Now, we can allocate one acre for your premises, okay. home, my home, mm. and the cow shed. Okay. And then we have one acre for forage production. Okay. To feed your animals. To feed my animals, yes. Yes. Mm. So, the way you start is as follows. Mm. At the planning stage, mm. that's when you have to decide which type of breed am I going to keep? Mm -hmm. Where am I going to get it? Yes. Which type of animals within that breed mm. am I going to start with? Mm -hmm. you get all it? these are questions at the planning stage. Yes. Uh -huh. Because there are alternatives. Mm. Some people prefer mm. to start with a, a, an in calf heifer. Yes six months pregnant mm. so that he only waits for three months and he's in milk mm. he's getting milk mm. but that one you'll need a lot of money channeled towards one animal okay then others mm. may say no there are these technologies we have mm. like the embryo transfer technology yeah. Yeah, yeah. my colleague I, has I, explained I, I it very well yes i was blown away now the beauty with the embryo transfer mm. We don't get embryos from every animal. Mm. No, we get embryos from the best animals. Okay. You see, on a farm, mm. 
a, a cow worldwide, mm. nobody is going to give you his best animal because <laughs> you have the money. Yes. Oh, Dr. Kam, let's take a walk here. <laughs> you get when, it. W w w when you say no one is going to give me the best, th their best cow. Yes. Uh, because then I'm going to make money. Yes. So how do I get the best cow then? Now, this technology mm. enables you to get the best cow okay. without him losing his. Okay. Because he's just going to give you so, an so embryo does that from mean that best cow. Yes. With sired uh -huh. by the best bull. Ah, so does that mean when one comes and wants to get um, to get their choice of a cow or yes. embryo, yes, they are taken through adversary um, uh, think uh, process that this means this, this means this yes. before they make the decision. Yes, nice. Now, the other advantage is mm. you start building your milking cow mm. from day one. How do I build it? <laughs> because I thought it's for diary. Now. You have what you do, mm. you'll go for any cross mm -hmm. mm. that can carry your embryo, your good cow. Ah, from the other yeah, okay. yeah. So those crosses can be at around 1.5. Mm. So from 5 million that you would have spent mm. on one Inca paper, yeah. you are getting like three. That's good business. You get it. I, I'm, now I you get the three. Mm. You come here. Mm. We get. We put in the embryos. Mm. What you are targeting is not these animals you've bought. These animals are just carriers of your of animal. what you need. Yes. yes. Mm. No. You start your animal from the time it is born. Okay. Okay. Mm. That one gives you enough time, one, to learn. The process the and process. the farming, yeah. With these mature animals yes, you are having. Yes, yes, I get it. You get it. Mm. Then two, it also helps you to learn more mm. on the disease management. Okay. It helps you to learn more mm. on the feeds. Mm. It gives you enough time to prepare a good structure now, for your when, animals. Now, when, when how? My friend, Tuanje Richard, has just been telling me about this structure. Yes. He told his father, yes. because the father has like uh, 500 heads of cow. Of yes, cattle, yes, and he told him that we need a structure of this magnitude. Yes, do we have do we have fabricators in our country who can do this on a local fee? Very much. Mm. We can design this. We can reduce it to five animals. Wow. We can but reduce it share. to any any. Mm. Now, what you see here, mm. the most important prince, the most important point mm. is the design. Yes. Don't bother much with the materials used. Mm. We can produce this out of timber. Okay. We can but produce it out of simple metal makes sense. hollow sections. There is, a, uh, there is a question here, Doctor. Yes. Uh, thank you so much. Those watching us from around the world, a couple of you are dropping your questions, and I'm picking them. I'm going to be asking. I'm still with a conversation with Dr. Yusuf Walusimbi. and Hussein. Uh, Kato Hussein Walusimbi. Yes. And um, someone here is asking, mm -hmm. how can I boost milk production with a little finances? That because is very good. Yes, because now we have started. Yes. But then how can I boost? Actually, you don't boost it when you've started. Okay, when do I boost you it? You prepare it in plan. Okay. For example, mm. over 90% of what you get in milk. Mm actually must come from the feed you give to your animal. Okay. You get it? Mm. Now, before you bring your animal, mm. there are about two or three things you must first put in place. One? Number one, you need to grow enough feeds. To you grow. must make enough feed mm. for your animal. Mm. By the time the animal comes, you should have enough feed stored mm. to take you for six months. Wow. So how do we do that? Mm -hmm. We select the best forages for diary, mm -hmm. and this one will include number one, for hay, mm -hmm. that is dry yes. grass. Mm. That one is usually chloris. Mm. Then number two is bracaria. Mm -hmm. Those ones are very good for hay. Mm. Then we have silage. Yeah. To make silage, it makes the biggest bulk of the diary feed. Oh yeah. And here we are looking at pastures or plant species that uh, have high yield 
of what? Of Formal material. Production, yes. mm. This is where we have elephant grass. Mm -hmm. That one I know. Yes. Mm. But we have good elephant grass, improved elephant grass varieties here. Is we it improved have, here? Yes. Okay. We have sugar napier. Uh -huh. It is a cross between sugar cane and elephant grass. Wow, that is sweet for them. Yes, yeah. it has enough sugar Nutrients, in yes. it mm. for it to be to for you to make silage out of it mm -hmm. without the need mm. of adding molasses. Mm. Then we have its counterpart. Mm. It is called Pak Chong. Mm. We actually into, we, we introduced it through from what from Thailand. Okay. It is high yielding, fast growing, mm. and most and important, affordable. it's available. Mm. It's available, it's but available. is it affordable it's for affordable. the farmer? It's affordable to the farmer. And many okay. farmers have take have bought it. Mm. Yeah. Now, the advantage this one has, mm. where the sugar napier has spines and complicates the weeding in the, in the garden mm -hmm. of sugar napier, mm. this one is clear. It doesn't have anything. Wow. And you do not get any problems with the workers mm. weeding it. Yeah. Two, it grows very fast. Three, it has a high protein content. Yeah. For it the actually one. can support mm. up to 15 liters of milk without any supplementation. That's nice. Yes. So it starts from the word go if one needs exactly. to get uh, more milk. Now, mm. in one acre, mm -hmm. you are able to get up to 20 tons of, for, of silage. Yeah, you're watching this, Dr. Walusi, I need you to go again and explain. You, you say that to the camera so that they can get it. <laughs> At times these yes. things sound like rocket science. Yes. Mm. No, we've just been harvesting and... Yes, I've, I've seen yes. it. In one acre mm -hmm. of elephant grass, mm. when you've planted Pak Chong, yes. you are able to get 20 tons of silage. Wow. The daily allowance of this milking cow mm. is 40 kilograms of silage. Wow. 40. Now, 40 per day per day so if you have 20 tons mm. and you are going to feed 40 kilograms of silage every day to one animal wow wow and this sugar napier you'll always be harvesting after every six weeks you're covered you you're get it covered you're so covered you can even afford to keep four i mean 10 animals depending yeah. on one acre of this magnitude yes wow so mr beginner mm. you try to make an effort you have one acre mm -hmm. of elephant grass mm. at the beginning yes. before you bring your animal yes in that one acre i would like you to plant in some legume yes. within yes mm. and this is a native legume but very quali good quality legume mm. that is centrosema hey Central summer, you yes, it's, it's that strong. you plant it in, mm. it is creeping. So you harvest once, you have a feed that has that is rich in energy and also rich in protein wow. for your animal. Wow. Another question here is coming in from uh, Mues, um, Muesimie Anita from Masakai saying, Is it not a continuous risk if we don't stop using chemicals in animal farming? Because now that we're doing research, and um, Dr. Mwesigwa earlier on alluded to how much we can, you know, get one, for lack of a better word, get one strong, fine, high-class semen, and then we, you know, we inseminate it in the others. Um, is it chemical related in one or the other, or it is just the drawing and the, and, 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 uh, and, and the insertion that is technological? Chemicals? Are there any chemicals? I don't actually match well with the embryos. Okay. And there are no chemicals when we are doing embryo transfer. Wow. No. Uh -huh. We only have the embryos with their nutrient media. Oh. Wow. To keep them alive. Yes. So there are no chemicals. There are no chemicals. No. Okay. And someone here says, can those breeds be reared anywhere in Uganda? That is a tumbo, a tumbo gems from Aria. This just a breed was bred for the African region. When you mean it was bred from where? From Denmark. From Denmark? Yes. Oh. Purposely for the African conditions. Okay. So if you are talking of Africa, it works. This breed will survive there. So um, another question here comes. Someone says, Do I have to come to Namurongi? I mean, Amuria. <laughs> Do I have to come to Namurongi to get that breed, or you have other regional? Uh, research institute. Amuria is closer to Serere. Hey. We have Nasari uh -huh, in, in Serere. Serere. He can get us there. 
Okay. Yeah. That is good. Uh, and this one says, what amount of maize do I need to produce silage that can look after those um, 100 heads of cattle annually? That is Anita Esther from Koboko. 100 heads of cattle? Yes. Supposing it's going to depend on silage? Yes. To feed them? Uh -huh. So 100 heads uh -huh. with a daily allowance of 40, uh -huh. that means four tons every what? Every, every day. What? If one acre gives you 20 tons, uh -huh. so it will only serve you five, five days. Five days, yes. But you, if you are depending on maize, mm. you're going to harvest maize only twice a year. We have two seasons yes, of, of maize. Of maize. Yes. Mm. Therefore, every season you must plant silage, mm. that you must produce silage mm. that is going to satisfy your animals out of season for six months. Wow. But if you're planting elephant grass, mm. where you're going to be harvesting every, f every five, every six weeks, mm. then you need a smaller land, a smaller amount of land. So you don't need maize. Uh, elephant grass is a better option than maize. Technically. Okay. Yeah. Um, we are still getting uh, messages here. Uh, please, thank you so much. Keep bringing these messages. They're coming. Mr. Well, Dr. Wilson will bear with us. Someone saying that maize growing does not seem to be very viable in some places. How can Naro help us towards adopting to that? Well, the doctors made it much more clear that use elephant grass. That will cover you for the maize. And the other one says, what is uh, no, Naro? There's another alternative. Another alternative yeah. besides elephant grass? Elephant grass thrives very well this side of the country before you cross the Karuma Bridge. Oh. The moment you cross Karuma Bridge, the survival of elephant grass reduces because of the high solar radiation yes. and long dry, dry season that okay. those, that region experiences. Okay. But there is a suitable alternative. In that region? Yes. Come on, doctor. That is uh -huh. the giant panicum. Giant panicum? Yes. Okay. Is it affordable for it's the It's available. It's native to that area. And okay. you'll find it even in the wild in wow. that area. Hmm. So if somebody can identify it, mm. grows it properly, mm -hmm. it would give him a yield that is almost close to that of elephant grass. Wow. Conversation goes on. Daniel from Alebonga District, uh, Tekwo Daniel says, what is Naro doing to help livestock farmers across the country? It looks like their knowledge just ends in their demonstration farms and in TV. Now, someone doesn't believe that you have regional, um, regional should I call them, uh, regional, regional research, research centers. Uh, can you break down for us that this one is in a Lebong district? Eh? That a Leptong. A Leptong, yes. Okay. That you can get to know that if I'm in a Leptong, I can go to this district, I can go to this region, and I get it. A Leptong is in the mid northern region. Yes. Okay? Yes. That is where we have the Acholi and Lango sub regions. Yes. Now, a Leptong is so close to Lira. Uh -huh. Let him just visit our station in Ngeta. Wow. You'll get all this information. Well, there you go. Neta is on the way yeah. to Alepton. Daniel, da Daniel, that has been answered. Um, I'm picking a couple of your questions. I may not get all of them, but I'm, I'm picking those. This one says, what does it take for us to access uh, those narrow training centers so that we can e be equipped with knowledge? I think this one is a farmer who loves to get more of this information. TV time can never be enough. Yes. But how can a farmer, a local farmer, um, have access to a facility like this or even better facilities and they get this kind of trainings? Number one, mm. the reality is people have not been frequenting our research stations mm. and yet they are the centers of research, yes. the centers of solutions mm. to the problems they are actually facing. As farmers too. As farmers. Mm. So we actually need to see these farmers visit us mm -hmm. for two major reasons. One. One, for us to be able to know where the problems they are facing mm -hmm. so that we tailor our research Based towards on the need. solving their problems. Yes. So the next day they come, they, they will solution. be able to find solutions that are going to work for them. Okay. You get that it? Is, that is one reason. Two, mm. if they expect to get modern technologies, mm that are more cost effective, mm. more high yielding, mm. and less tiresome to them, mm. then they must come to us. Because that is our work. Mm. So, uh, Doctor, y you and I know that Ugandans are not good at searching the information. We all hold up into our small cocoons and we say maybe things are not working. Some have tried. People like me, you're in office, but you want to do farming, but you don't have enough time. 
um, how best can they get into agriculture and how much time should they give this business that they don't leave their offices? But again, such structures and businesses are thriving. There are two ways. One. Number one, mm -hmm. you must be able to employ competent professionals. The word competent. Do we have enough competent uh, capacity in our country when it gets to this kind of business? They are there. Mm -hmm. But that competence mm. is always built over time. With, over time. Okay. Through training. Through training. Yeah. Mm. You can't get your A6 liver, mm. Mm. attach him to our stations mm. for the purpose of getting skills. Mm -hmm. Then in the near future, you'll have a competent person mm. so who can help you in that what in area that is, yes the most critical issue here is mm. that person should be interested should have the love for animals oh so you don't get into it when you don't have the love for it if you don't have love for the animals you don't get, get into you it you don't get it <laughs> but if you develop love for the animals yes you'll even feel touched yes if your cow has not eaten that day oh yeah you'll feel touched if you find your cow sick, oh, yeah. and okay. therefore, mm. you'll, be, you'll feel more attracted to see your animals look In better. Health, like you are. That one will be the drive for you to get more knowledge and okay. to get more experience. Mm. And eventually, you'll, be, you'll develop into a real competent mm. professional. Someone says, uh, what are other recommended feeds that can boost milk production? Rona Awuma. I think uh, Dr. Walusimbi answered that already. Let me add more. But you can that. add more, yes. Yes. Mm. Now, essentially, let me just relate it mm. to this feed mm. here we have. Mm. Mm. What we see here, mm. this is a TMR, mm. a total mixed ration. Okay. And it is designed to meet the production capacity of our animals, 27 okay. liters a day. day. Okay? So your feed must be proportional to the exactly. production capacity. Yeah. You see feeding costs, mm. feeding costs mm. account for more than 65% of the production costs huh. of our animals. Okay. If you make good judgment mm. to minimize expenditure uh -huh. on feeds yeah. while maximizing productivity of your animals, mm. you will be in very good profitable business. Makes sense. That you get a little sense, yes. So, <coughs> you need to make sure that you feed your animals mm. not in excess, mm. but not deficient of your animals' production targets. Oh, yeah. So, you have to, the, the portions have to be in tandem with the productivity. With the level. productivity. Makes sense. That makes a lot of sense. Once you do that, mm. then you are in good business. Okay. So, we in that feed, mm. We have three main categories. Mm -hmm. One. We have the dry stuff, mm -hmm. which is in form of hay, mm. and we usually use Chloris hay, mm. Chloris Guyana hay. Mm. Then we have the high moisture mm. component, mm. which is always a silage. Mm. In this, we have maize silage, mm. but we also have another area mm. where in some feed where we have elephant grass silage. Yep. Then we have the concentrates. Mm to cover up for the minerals mm. and that is where we have common salt that's oh. where we have that's where we have mineral powder and then we have what we would call appetizers for the animals and binding agents okay <laughs> that is where we have the molasses yes you see this animal mm -hmm. once we've determined its nutrient requirements mm. And the vibration meets its nutrient requirements. Mm. We would like to encourage it to eat more. Of that? Yes. Mm. Because the more it eats, the, the more, more milk we shall get from it. Yes. You get it? I get it. So, we include something at the, that would attract it to eat more. Yeah. You more know like an molasses? additive. Mm. Yes. Yes. Once they feel they smell, there is some molasses, they, they all come close. Ah. They are ready to eat. Yes. The more it eats, the more milk we the get. The more milk we get. Yeah. Uh, someone here is asking, uh, this is uh, Moyambi Fred says, what is Naro doing to deal with the fluctuating milk prices? Um, well, I think that question goes to the National Dairy Authority. They will answer that. Um, no, uh, no. Doctor, I you want to relate to that? It. Yeah. Okay. Fluctuating milk prices mm. are as a result of fluctuating milk production. But they told me these breeds have 
is really high quality. Now, mm. most of our farmers mm. are, pay, are feeding fresh grass to our animals. Okay. Two, is it, is it bad or is it good? I'm going to give you the problems. Okay. Two, they don't have these elaborate designs of their structures. Yes. You can find a cow shed that is just three and a half meters it's high. Above, yes. You get it? Yeah. Now, Even what happens... Entered, yeah, they're going down, yes. What happens, those animals, during the dry season, oh. the hot weather... Oh. They it's are really under stress. So yeah. They cannot feed to meet their daily, nutri daily milk production, and milk goes down. They're stressed. Once there is that drop in milk, uh -huh. of course there will be a drop in milk supply, and the prices must increase. Oh, yeah, and the quality is And low. the quality is compromised because of scarcity. Mm. You get it? Yes. Those are the chosen causes of the fluctuations you, in you are talking production. about the green grass you yes you're going to now mm. green grass is available during the rainy season oh yeah when everything is has turned brown mm. during the dry season there's no green grass oh yeah and the animals will not feed to their appetite true eventually they'll not give you enough milk it will go down yeah now Wha what mm. we have done mm -hmm. we'd never give our animals any fresh grass you they are used to everything this. is conserved oh. so whether it is rainy season or dry season for them their fish. feed does not mm. change so can a farmer also conserve do, do we now need to build a stronger reservoirs for 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 this kind of grass and the weight or something what what technology can we now use as local farmers that is the way to go silage silage mm. hay production mm. the reason is mm. it is what we call climate climate smart agriculture yes you have your feed mm. at any time you have feed that can take you through six months in uganda we've not registered a dry season longer that than goes, four months yes we have so by the end of the six months you, have you already season. have fresh grass yes. available mm. so we must build capacity to store feed for our animals now the, the other question that came in from someone from Twitter. My, my phone battery just died, so the ones on Twitter, I cannot get any other questions. And later, David gets me the, the, the questions on your phone, and possibly I'll read them. But there was a question I read, Dr. Walusimbi, before yes. it, it blacked out. Um, someone was saying, so what advice do you give us, us, the local farmers, Abantubawansi, who don't have a lot of money to afford this kind of expensive technology and all, but would like to start small? How do we start with affordable means to make this a reality? Number one, mm. <coughs> the principles remain the same. Start small. Start small, mm. but begin the right way. Yeah. Before you have your animals, mm. you should have enough feed mm. that can take you through the longest dry season. Okay. Okay? Mm. Once you have that, then <coughs> construct a simple cow shed. Okay. It may not be that big as mm. this. With the but it with, with, with wood. meet the welfare conditions of the cow. So does that mean someone needs to... Do, do we have standards shed? Exactly. Because Number one, yeah. a cow shed at the eve there, uh -huh. it should not be below 3.5 meters high. Okay. The reason is it should push this hot iron sheet mm. well above okay. to clear for fresh wind to, to move through, through to mm. keep the animal in a cool place. Okay. You see this dairy cow, mm -hmm. under our conditions, mm. it will thrive well, it will feed well, it will give you enough milk mm. as long as its environment, the cow shed, is temperature mm -hmm. does not go beyond 26 degrees centigrade. Is your shed allowing your cows to be below 20. 26 degrees centigrade wow be it the very dry outside is 35 mm. inside within the cow's environment mm. must not go above 26 degrees centigrade wow every single rise in temperature above 26 degrees centigrade uh -huh. will result into a four liter decrease in milk production four liter four liter Farmers, th th this is very, doctor, look in the camera straight and, <laughs> and you share this because yes. that, those are figures that are very critical. Your shed mm. should maintain 26 degrees centigrade 
within the cow's premises, mm. even when the outside temperature goes above 35. Mm. If it fails, every single rise in temperature, single degree rise in temperature, above 26 degrees centigrade, uh -huh. will result into a decrease of four liters of milk every day. So but it will not change the feed intake. So one digit takes down four, four liters. liters. <laughs> so it's the reason why mm. farmers are feeding their animals, mm. animals are eating, mm. they come to squeeze milk, mm. there, is, there no is, milk. is no milk. You get it? Yeah. Well, how does it happen? Uh -huh. When an animal feels so hot, mm. it will not sit down, yeah. it will keep standing, it will not be feeding. It's the moment you find your animals standing, mm. they're mm. not ruminating, yeah. they're just under stress, the other is not producing any milk. Because it's stressed. It is stressed. If you're under stress and fatigue, you can't do you productive work. Now, we have to make sure the animal is in good conditions mm. to persuade it to feed well. Mm. After feeding, it goes and sits down comfortably. Okay. Mm. Then it will be able to make milk then every time it is settled. Then, doctor, I'm, 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 I'm again saying as, you know, as, as a small-scale farmer or someone starting up, yes. with all these, do we have access to the expertise of doctors and uh, scientists to... You know, once in a while, check on our small farmers' farms, and if they're going to, do we have a process we go through, or we just talk to our district uh, veterinary uh, head or something of the sort? Now, mm. Nariri has a program, an outreach program, mm. and it, it is going through its communication program. Mm. That's why we are actually giving all our contacts. Mm. We've already given these contacts, from the previous year's farm clinic, yeah. if you look at my, 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 my phone, mm. I have over 50 farmers contacting me through wow. WhatsApp, wow. through Messenger, wow. and some are just giving direct calls. Doctor, for purposes of this program, yes. someone would like to, love to get much more close and personal. Maybe there are some questions they're not in position to ask. I beg. For the public good, could you give that number on air that farmers can get it? Please, I beg. Okay. Mm. It is 0702-48-47-34. Muruganda, doctor. 0 msambu, 0 bili, anamu munana, anamu msambu, asatu munya. MTN. Yes, aha. 0777-3366-34. Now, if you're a farmer and you have other questions about this, please just, just give it, send a WhatsApp, don't call. First send a WhatsApp to introduce yourself and then we go forward. There is a question here, doctor, saying that, uh, um, what's the cost of feeding that leads to the daily profit margin of 80,000 shillings? In other words, what are the inputs? That is Colin Omondi. I don't get that question. 80,000? Th yes, this comes from the question. Earlier on, we had a conversation with uh, Dr. Mwesigwa. Yes. And Dr. Mwesigwa said that uh, the capacity, and you've, you've alluded to it earlier, that the productivity of this cow every day is 20? Liters. 20, 26 or 20 liters? 27 liters. 27 liters. Yes. And uh, the doctor took it at uh, 2,000 per liter. Yes. If someone is, having, is selling a liter at 2,000 2, shillings, yes. and then you do the math. You have two, two cows. Yes, you have two cows. So you are getting 4,000, I mean 40 liters. Yes, 40 liters. Times 2,000, uh -huh. that is 80,000 80, liters a day. Uh -huh. yes. Now this one is saying, mm. what are the inputs to make sure that those figures come to reality? Now, we are assuming you are using mm. a combination of feeds that are low cost, mm -hmm. but nutritionally mm. good. Mm. That, is, that will include mm. chloris hay, mm -hmm. we will, it will include uh, maize silage mm -hmm. or elephant grass silage, mm. it will include some minerals, mm -hmm. some, some what, some molasses, mm. okay, mm. mixed together. Mm. On average, a kilo will go for around 850, mm. okay, wow. a kilo. Wow. And this, and, shillings. Yes. Yeah. and this cow, uh -huh. that feed, has an allowance of 28 kilograms mm. of feed. Wow, 28. Yes. It jumps away from, yeah. it drops from 40. Yes. The reason why the other silage is 40 uh -huh. is because silage is 75% water. Oh, I was looking but at this the But this is like the dry hay. Mm. And it it's is 15% 
water jumping from 75 to, to 15 percent wow you get it i do the the the, the what the powder mm. does not contain any water almost mm. Mm. You get it? Yes. So the amount drops. Okay. Now, so once it drops, mm. then you can do the calculation. Okay. Mm. Um, then Doreen Ayebade in Chiangkwanzi says, um, how are you managing to control ticks? Some are even becoming resistant here in Chiangkwanzi. The ticks are becoming very heavy for them. Okay. Mm. Let me first give you our experience here. Yes. You see this premise? Mm. You the see? You see yes. that chain link? Yes. You see that flat ah, surface here? The access to this facility. Now, if you look at these animals, mm. some animals have DK. Yes. Those are animals that we got, we brought in directly from Denmark. From Denmark. Okay. They reached here on 27th November, 2018. But they look to be, have they given birth yet? This is their second birth. Wait a minute. That's fast. Yes. Now, uh -huh. since then, these animals have been here. Mm in this shed mm. they've never been sprayed they've never had any tick challenge how do you achieve that we Is are able to create a tick free zone how? around their shed how do you do that now a tick will only move mm. through grass it does not move on bare gra on bare yeah. ground and it's all concrete yes eyes. yes all over it's concrete yes Secondly, mm. what would actually bring ticks to mm. this place would have been the pets, the dogs, the cats. Uh -huh. That's why we have the chain link uh -huh. around. All through. Makes sense. So, since November 27, mm. 2018, up mm. to now, there has been no tick coming here. And um, uh, just, Doreen, just to be very sure, earlier on when we had Dr. Mwesigwa, you could possibly take the program back and you'll, you'd watch. Dr. Mwesigwa said they are actually doing a research on that on how we're going to have um, a tick-free kind of environment when it gets to, to, to livestock. Someone here says that 40 liters um, a day uh, means you should have ready customers. Where is that market? Arafat Katongoli is saying, if one is going to produce that kind of magnitude of milk, do we have the market as a country? <laughs> Nationally, mm. we are actually deficient of, of, of milk. The market is too in big. The country. You just get one jerry can of milk, uh -huh. take it to any trading center, uh -huh. and let people know that you have quality milk there, and tell me whether it will spend an hour. So the market is there? The market is there. You just need to do you the best. You just have to produce milk. The best milk. And make, produce the best milk. Mm. You'll okay. have the market. Doctor, this one says, the please guide on the value addition to milk because wholesalers tend to take excess profits. The value addition to the milk products. We shall look at three main common products mm. of milk processing. Mm. The first one is packed milk. Mm. Homogenized pasteurized yeah. milk, mm. packed milk, yeah. okay? In our supermarkets. Yes. Mm. That one, what do we add there? It's only the infrastructure that you need. Yeah. Because what is actually done mm. is heat treatment. Oh, yeah. Pasteurizing is heating it at a high temperature mm. in a short time, drop the milk, the mm. milk temperature to cold in a very short time. Pack You'll it. have pasteurized it mm. and pack it. Mm. There's, no, there's no raw material added to it. Wow. But the liter flies from 2,000 to 3,000. 50% addition. To the, to the product. To the product. Yes. You get it? Mm. Then when you get that milk, turn it into yogurt, mm. what have you added there? Wow. Very little things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay? Yeah, yeah. And a liter jumps from 2,000 mm. to 8,000. Actually to 10,000. Mm. You get it? And that's done. Yes. Wow. So the most critical <coughs> thing with, the with the adding value to milk mm. is the initial cost of the equipment. And that is the most expensive, yes. doctor. Yes. Once you can acquire mm. this equipment, mm. you have very low running costs. Oh, yes. So the first time it will be heavy, it will but be going heavy. forward, you will recover very well. Well, the conversation keeps on going. Um, we're talking about uh, livestock and uh, the diary, especially. 
Today we have talked to a couple of doctors. Uh, someone who's going to talk to me is someone from Zoe, um, that is a Zoetis. Now these ones are dealing in African livestock productivity and health advancement. You've seen some of their gadgets at times when they're milking the cows. Those are things you need to equate yourselves and understand if you're a dairy farmer, where do you find it, how can you do it, and a lot more of that. I'll take a break for now, but before I just want to thank our great sponsors, that is Bank of Uganda, through the Agricultural Credit Facility, we have a Standard Bank, we have the NSSF, not forgetting that Zoetis are being very, very close to this, and our key partners, that is a NARU, the National Agricultural Research Organization and a Nation Media Group. I'll take a break for now, and when I return, I'm coming back with an expert from Zoetis explaining on how we can actually go down and we start to milk our cows with better advanced technology. Good evening, viewers. Thank you for joining us on uh, Farm Clinics um, Seeds of Gold. My name is Melissa. I work with Stanbic Bank in the agribusiness segment. The reason as to why as a bank we are interested in um, this program is because it is in one of the biggest sectors, uh, employing so many people in the agriculture sector and contributing 23% to GDP. Unfortunately, the balance or there's a mismatch between the contribution to GDP and the total number of employees or people employed in the sector. And as such, this is because of some of the challenges faced by the sector, one being the uh, use of poor farming methods or subsistence methods, post-harvest handling. On the post-harvest handling issue is, the poor post-harvest handling issue is the fact that um, it's been noted that over 30% of our produce goes to waste at this stage. And as such, these very reasons I've mentioned and several others um, will make the sector look like it's a high risk sector and um, limit access to financing. So as a bank, we are here to confirm and advise that we are available to provide financing to the sector as a means to bridge one of these challenges that faces the sector. They are the financing that we offer applies to the, all the players along the value chain. We're talking about individual farmers, commercial farmers, those in the agro-processing um, uh, area of agriculture, as well as the input providers, the farmer groups as well qualify for this, and several other partners that are interested in the agri-business uh, sector. What kind of financing do we offer? We do offer financing, um, one is the trade financing. Trade financing uh, will specifically look at our players such as the coffee and cocoa processors that tend to export their produce. And how do we support them? We will offer contract or commodity financing where we will, where one has a contract, uh, we use that contract to offer a certain percentage of financing for them to be able to stock up and be able to supply into the contract. We will, in some instances, take the commodity as the stock. There are instances where one has supplied and is waiting to be paid, and as such will also, but also needs extra financing to go and purchase more stock and continue to supply into a contract. So in such an instance, we will take the invoice, and that's um, termed as invoice discounting, and finance them against that invoice. In terms of uh, beyond 12 months financing, we've got the term loans. The term loans cater towards the setting up of, of um, your processing, agro-processing plant or farm um, where you are looking to put up warehouses or buildings um, uh, to start production. And the other area that we look at is the mechanization, which is important for the agriculture sector. And for this, we have the vehicle and asset financing uh, facility. The vehicle and asset financing facility really takes on that asset, which could be a tractor, it could be a hauler, um, uh, a sorter, it could be um, 
a dryer, and, and we use that as the security for you to access financing uh, by giving you funds to purchase uh, these machines. We also go beyond financial um, services in the sense that we will offer um, insurance within our bank assurance team, and this includes agriculture insurance that covers both crop and animal, that's the crop and animal insurance. The other product in this space will be insurance to um, cover your machinery and plants and equipment. So that's, that's the other area that we cover. The other services that we offer are in the sense of trade. So we've got the Africa-China desk. Um, by virtue of our relationship with the Standard Bank Group that, has, um, that is also related to ICBC, we are able to connect <coughs> our farmers or producers in the country to uh, people or entities looking to import uh, our produce. And essentially the biggest, the biggest um, commodity that we've seen that has interest is coffee and cocoa. And so we, we are able to do that connection to get markets for our local producers as well. And um, in light of the fact that we are in the COVID-19 pandemic, as a bank, we continue to come up with solutions that address the ever-changing environment. And one of the areas that we noted that has been grossly or greatly impacted is um, our people who are in the informal sector, both in agribusiness and non-agribusiness uh, um, activities. <laughs>of the seeds of gold of Fab clinic and we are at naliri naliri is the national livestock resource research institute it's a phone this side uh, close to namalonga where we are we've understood the daily production how it's done and what you should start with if you're starting small great thanks to all those watching us from wherever you're watching from and you've been part of this conversation since we started to where we are so the first one was to understand the embryo and how much it can produce dr mwesigo just blew our minds away then when dr when dr walusim became he showed us the mechanics or oh, now we can actually start small and we go on growing the discipline that comes with it the technology that comes with it but necessarily the attitude if you're going to get into dairy farming. So let us assume that you put in consideration what the two first doctors explained. Now you need to start to, you know, to milk your cow and make the money. Joining us for this conversation, we have Brian, an expert, and the others coming in from Zoetis, who are used to the advanced technological ways of doing this and understanding the diseases that come with, uh, of course, uh, the dairy farming. Brian, good evening. Good it is, it, it is a good you? conversation. First, first introduce yourself and l let us get to know who you are and what you do and your company. My name is Dr. Rini Twebrian. Mm -hmm. I'm with uh, Dr. Bridget Buyinza mm -hmm. and uh, we work with Zoetis. Okay. Zoetis is the largest animal health company in the whole world. Uh -huh. We manufacture medicines, uh, okay. vaccines, bio devices and other equipments. Okay. And uh, here in Uganda, our presence is through distributors. So we have Eram Uganda Limited distributing our products. Uh -huh. We have Vet Center Uganda Limited distributing our products. But uh -huh. we are all over the world in a uh, hundred and plus uh, countries. Wow, Dr. Bridget, good to see you. <laughs> <laughs> now, let's talk about diary. You see, we, we talked about how to start small, how to build the shed, yeah, yeah. and we want the milk to come through. Mm. Now, from your context, as, um, as, as, as now someone who deals with the adder, we want to understand, do farmers at times understand that the adder is affected in one way? Thank you very much. Mm. Uh, farmers in most uh, times, they don't know when mm. the adder has a problem, when it doesn't have a problem. Mm. But in, in some times, they will know whether it has a problem by observing it, because we want to say the adder is the most important part on this cow. Of a dairy cow, yes. If it gets a problem, mm. then you have issues. You will not get the milk. How much do we lose as a country per annum um, when adders are not paid attention to? Uh, in Uganda, we don't have those statistics, mm. but probably in the U.S., they lose around 1.5 billion U.S. dollars. Wow. just because of mastitis okay what but i can say here mm. in uganda per cow if you have a cow like this giving mm. you 
uh, 25 liters, you may lose 600,000 Ugandan shillings okay. annually. annually. So that is losing money yeah. through discarding the milk because mm -hmm. the milk from this other that is sick they mm -hmm. will, will not be accepted uh -huh. even when they will try to use it to make like yogurt yeah. or cheese to yeah. not taste nice mm -hmm. so you discuss discard that so mm -hmm. also the cost through treatment that is a lot mm -hmm. but what is very important mm -hmm. if this cow gets uh, mastitis and mm -hmm. we've said mastitis is when the other is sick so mitis, ma, eh? mastitis, mastitis yes. is the disease for the udder. Yes, yes. Okay. Uh, Chidima, I, I, I need you to get a shot <laughs> of, the, of the udder. Now you're starting the conversation. Carry yeah, on, yeah. doctor. So when it, it, it gets sick mm. and you don't pay attention to it or mm. you don't call a veterinary doctor to treat it, mm. then it will uh, progress to clinical mastitis. Okay. That's where you start seeing pus getting out of the udder. Oh. You see some blood. Mm. When you touch it, it is so hard. Mm. It's a little bit too late. What You've lost the other. What causes the disease? Uh, a lot of things. It can be bacteria. It mm. can be, but mostly the bacteria. Mm. This when it is just gets inflamed. That yeah. is not dangerous. What's dangerous is the bacteria that enters through the teeth uh -huh. or sometimes uh, uh, like uh, you have uh, an hygienic place like this and mm. cows lie down and yeah. the organs enter into the udder. Ah. Yeah. So at what level, how does a farmer identify, what are some of the symptoms one would, would, would look at and get to know, okay, now we okay. have the disease on the other? Okay, right now we have, we are, we have two types of uh, mastitis. Okay. There's this mastitis, if you can look at this cow and tell that it has mastitis, mm. that is clinical mastitis. That mm. means if you're milking, you're seeing some clots, mm. the udder is out of, of shape, mm. when you touch it, it is hard, mm -hmm. then maybe some blood is coming out, mm. that is clinical mastitis. Mm. There's subclinical mastitis where you need to make a test mm. to be able to tell whether this cow has mastitis. Mm. And that is the test we shall demonstrate here. And, 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 and that test? Um, is it affordable to local farmers? If so, where do they find it? It's very affordable because you can buy it 110,000 mm. and can work for you if you have 20 American cows for like even six months okay. using this test. So it's available at Elam Uganda Limited. You uh -huh. can go there and buy it. Elam, it's in Kampala? Yeah, container village. You can okay. go to Baku. Now, if, 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 if someone is, is not in Kampala, someone is in a beam, but is interested in this, where, like, where can they find it? They can call uh, Elam uh, offices, but also Elam has other distributors all over Cultural the country, right. mm. so they can always get it. Okay, yeah. now, Doctor, you, you said when I just look at it and, um, uh, and, 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 and I, I can tell that, well, there is something, their clothes yes, and yes. their bloods and mm. all, are there some physical... Um, other physical attributes someone can look at and say, oh, maybe it's limping, maybe it's, um, do, do we have those ones? Yeah, if you look at the other and it's not balanced, mm -hmm. that cow becomes a suspect. You can look at this cow, it's yeah. a little bit balanced, yeah. it's even the other cow, yeah. even if it is not much, yeah. this cow probably also suffered from mastitis because when the one... They, you see there are four teeth yes. and they have different chambers. Those yes. are four chambers and they never communicate. The milk coming from one chamber doesn't mm. mix from milk coming from another chamber. Okay. So when we check, you might find it is only one chamber that is sick. The rest is okay. And that's oh. very important for someone to check mm. so that he knows how to mix his milk. Okay. So we are going to do a test, mm. check this cow, mm -hmm. check that cow, mm. and we see whether it is positive, whether mm. it is negative. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, the conversation is still going. Brian and uh, Bridget, they come from Zoetisa. These are, well, experts dealing with uh, uh, the diseases of the udder. <coughs> if you have a cow that should give you possibly 30 liters of milk per, per day and they drop, those figures mean quite a lot. Just pay attention to the udder and you understand what is coming through. So they're going to test right now. <coughs> And um, as you can see, the first they tie it all around, then after tying it, then it starts to do um, what needs to be done, what needs to be done just to make sure that the test is well carried out. Um, so he's explaining this. Y you picked out some milk from there? Yeah, yeah. So I went uh -huh. there and uh, I know because I will know the chambers because mm. it's very important to know which chambers are okay. 
two mm. chambers are sick. Mm -hmm. So I will tilt this pedal like this and pour, and I will know I will have equal amounts of milk in each chamber. Okay. So then I will pour this reagent. Let mm. me use this one. People are not That is from Zeratis? Yeah, this is mm. from Zoet. It's, high, right. uh, it's a, a high quality product. Okay. And uh, yeah, it will give you good results. Mm. So, so what are I'm we looking experienced. At so I'll put equal amounts mm. of the reagent okay. in, in this. So in what this are we milk. looking for in the reagent? When you mix the reagent with the milk, what, what color are we looking okay. for? Okay, we are looking at thickness. Okay. When it is uh, negative, it will stay watery. Uh -huh. If it is uh, positive, it will form uh, like to be thick, eh? uh -huh. thickening, yes. like mucus or a gel will be formed. Okay. So let's watch for that. Mm. You put equal amounts. Uh, me, uh, I'm you a bit expert. experienced, so yes. if you are not experienced, you need to measure uh, so that you know you are putting in equal amounts. What do we measure? Okay. With, a, with, with a lead? A syringe. So you swear, eh? mm. You swear like this. Mm. When you observe, you see that it has started uh. becoming like mucus, eh? Yes. So it's you know uh, thi mm. this chamber, this teeth is, mm. is thick. This mm. is moderate mastitis. Mm. This one is thick. It is mm. moderate mastitis. Mm. This one is a little bit okay. It's mm. uh, weak, mm. but the three... The three quarters mm. are very sick. You can you can see that uh, yes. this is three becoming like a gay. Mm. So when you try to pour, it will also like uh, you oh see how it yeah, powers yeah, the becomes like a mucus. So yes. this cow, all the 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 the, the three chambers mm. are positive. Okay. So what you need to do after mm. doing this, because mm. this is a test that is done by like a milking assistant. Yes. If you get to know that this cow is sick, then you call a veterinarian. He mm. will help you probably to pick some samples because mm. we need to do an antibiotic sensitivity test mm. to know which product to use. We okay. don't want to misuse mm. antibiotics. And also you want to milk this animal last. Mm. You don't mix this milk with the rest of the milk. Otherwise, okay. it will be rejected. Now, to the, to, to, to the consumers, is that milk gold? Doesn't taste nice. There is like lucidity test. It actually, have you ever tested milk and doesn't taste nice? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So no, little no, no, bits, no. yeah, yeah. Mm. In most cases, so yes. it's not nice and not recommended to be consumed. Yes. First of all, it doesn't taste nice. Yes, it's and unhealthy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, a couple of questions are coming through. Thank you for your questions. Now we have tested one. Can we yeah. go to the Let's other? Let's check another one, probably. You watch we are it. testing yeah. uh, the diseases. So far we have one ch one. Uh, three chambers are already um, infected. No, we want uh, and um, then after one? that the one he's going to sick. explain no, how cost effective no, we don't want is this. One which Should is, we be worried? Is, is it a foodable or one. something of this sort? Now they're going to tie another one and then we go into it. Okay. Your questions are coming through. Um, uh, I think I'll have a little later... I'll have uh, Dr. Mwesigwa and uh, Dr. Uh, Wadusimi to respond to these. The cost input and comparison. Emma Mwebesa in Hoima, thank you so much. I had the vaccine center, the institute. How do they get the voping to go help with the current wave of foot and mouth disease? Uh, Dr. Mwesigwa and Wadusimi respond to this. Currently, we're still talking to Brian from Zoetis. Um, we're trying to find if these artists have the disease that affects the udders and this drops the production of the milk from your cows. As a dairy farmer, you need to pay more attention and critical attention to this. If they drop in that, that's a drop of money. So Brian is getting another sample from the second cow. We had the first cow and we had three chambers already affected, but um, it's not something that should worry you so much if it's detected in time you will, you, you'll actually save the cow. Uh-huh. Uh, great thanks again to our great sponsors. That is uh, NSSF. We have uh, the Bank of Uganda through the Agriculture Credit Facility and the Stanbic Bank and the others, of course, Zoetis. Here we are. We are going to test. Um, we have only three chambers here. Yeah, the, the other one is not giving milk. The other one won't give milk. Okay. Okay. Here we go. We do the shaking. We do the shaking again. So as you can see, there is mm. a difference between the, there is some little thickening. Yes. Uh, not like the first one. Yeah. The first so one this one has uh, some weak. You can say it's weak mastite. So mm. it's still early. Okay. And uh, uh, it's very important. Like if you get to know, then you manage it when it's it is still detected. early. Mm. So it has some. But uh, it is weak, mm. so sometimes it may not require any intervention when okay. it is still, when uh, still weak. Yeah. But when it is like moderate, yes. like this one we tested, yes. you need the intervention. So yeah. wait a minute, um, the one you've just tested, is it okay when it's in there but when it's mild? Yeah, it's it okay. Won't it affect the test? Is it good for consumption? 
Yeah, yeah, it is good for consumption because this test is looking at somatic cell count. So okay. the somatic cell count is not uh, that high. Mm. So it's also very important that mm. when you identify such cow, mm. you come in very early so okay. that you stop it proceeding to the clinical mastitis. Wow. Maybe we talk about how do you avoid this? How do I, that's, that was the thing because mm. anything that is cost effective that yeah, I have yeah, to yeah. look for a vet, yeah, yeah. I have to get the medication, yeah. I have, it, it's cost effective. How do I avoid all this? First of all, the screening we have we have done is mm. very important because mm. it helps you identify the positive animals, the negative animals, okay. so that you can act mm. and also know which ones to start with and which ones to end with. Mm. Sometimes like uh, a milker like me, I'll start milking this cow which is positive, mm. then I continue milking others. By the time I finish, I've infected all, all the cows. Them, yes. So that is very important. Mm. I advise all farmers to get this test. It's mm. a very cheap test. Mm. It's a must have on a farm, dairy farm if you are a dairy farm mm. and a commercial dairy farm. Mm. Second, the hygiene is very important. Okay. If you have uh, a place like this, it is, should always be clean. Where mm. they are sleeping, they are clean. Because mm. if the udder goes down and it gets infected, mm. then it falls sick. Mm. The milker, the person who is milking, yeah. Yeah, the equipment needs to be clean. Mm. We, we are using milking machine. Yes. So if you put the milking machine here, and you just take it without to disinfecting. I saw yeah. the, they have good practices. The manager was disinfecting mm. after milking. Yeah. That's very important mm. because if you had, you had milked this one, had, had the bacteria, you take it there, mm. then he comes and disinfects. He yeah. kills. So okay. it avoids so you. Not spread. Yeah, mm. spreading it. So mm. that is very important. Mm. But also hygiene of the other mm. is very, very, very important. The milker himself needs to be clean. Uh, very clean. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that is a conversation we're still having, but again, that is just for that. We need to make another test. How yeah, do we test? Um, there is another test we need to do. Brian. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So mm. another important, uh, 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 the one of the problems affecting dairy farming is yeah. calf diarrhea. Calf diarrhea. Because you need we have to a calf here. You need to take care of a calf. Yes. For you to be able to get a good uh, diary cow. Mm. If you do not take care of it when it is young, yeah. then you don't expect uh, uh, to give you 30 liters of milk at so the end. So you need to be intentional from the word go. Yeah, so you feed it very well. If it, it has a disease problem, you manage it very well yeah. so that it does not affect its growth and also its future performance. Okay. So one of the big problems is calf diarrhea. Yeah. And what happens, people don't know how to manage diarrhea. Yeah. The, uh, what, when a calf is dilating, mm. of course it can be caused by bacteria, yeah. poor nutrition, mm. it can be due to viruses, it yeah. can be due to worms, mm. it can be a lot of things. Mm. So if it is dilating, of course it loses its body weight, you can see it, it yeah, doesn't yeah. look nice, mm. uh, so because it's it is yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, mm. yeah, it is dehydration. Mm. Actually, diarrhea kills by dehydration. Oh yeah. And today I want to demonstrate to people mm. on how to correct dehydration. Okay. You don't give it antibiotics, but mm. if you, you correct it hy dehydration, mm. then the cow will get stronger, it will start eating and mm. will not be affected by diarrhea. Now, how do we test the diarrhea? We are Let's going to go straight to the anus? Yes. Okay. Let's pick the sample. We, we, we are picking the sample from, uh, from the anus of the Let's calf just to know it. how to treat the diarrhea uh, from the calf. If you are an intentional diarrhea farmer, if you're going to do this, on an industrial scale or on a business scale. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So is this test of the diarrhea, is it affordable? Can a farmer find it in the, uh, from your suppliers? This is a test for veterinarians, but okay. it is a simple test to do. Okay. So it is available in Uganda. Okay. It is a, a very nice test. Uh. And um, it can test uh, five pathogens. Okay. From it's the a cow. five in one, yeah. So wow. you can easily know the five causes of diarrhea uh. by making that test. You know, Brian, when you say all that, it sounds good, but is it affordable? You see me, I'm looking out for the local farmer. <laughs> <laughs> is it affordable? It yes, gets five pounds. It does ask the farmer, but, but is, is it, it okay if you lose this calf? How no, much you it, lose? It is not okay, yeah, but I mean, we, we are trying to look at farmers who are actually starting small, like Dr. Walusimbi told us. Yes. Mm. It's very affordable mm. because the test you can get it probably like uh, 50,000 to, oh, to do the test. Yeah. And uh, you don't need to always do the test. Mm. Okay. Yeah. It's you, a, need to uh, monitor you, you need to know, like you want to check through your farm which yeah. are some of the pathogens that are available that are giving you 
problems. Yeah. Mm. So it's not that every time you have a calf with diarrhea, yeah. you need to take the test, okay? Okay. So okay. we're going to take the sample from um, the yeah. calf and just to know if it has, um, if it has diarrhea and what are the causes and that will address us to okay. the Sorry. way we're going to solve the solution. It will address the medicines so that are needed uh, for, for it. <coughs> Very uncomfortable test. No, it is not. Uh, it is not uncomfortable. It's, uh, mm. it's a swab, so it doesn't pain it. So. Oh, like these yeah. swabs of COVID, the way that you were taking our swabs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So we have this. We just put it there and m make sure it mixes. What are we looking for in that? This is the dairy one. So we are mm. just mixing this fecal mm. material to mix with the dairy one. Okay. Then later we shall uh, open the kit. Okay. And we put it there. This, this is dirty now. Let's move it. So all this is done by your vet, doc. Don't do this alone. You need a vet to come. So and this do is an hour. Uh, what yeah. Zoet is doing mm. is availing these solutions to the veterinarians. Okay. And is it availing it to the farmers as well? Because a, a, a vet would come and doesn't know about this new uh, t science and technology. Of, of course, we want uh, a people to do the right things. Mm. Eh? So we don't so we are encourage training the farmers as well. Uh, we don't uh, train farmers mm. to start uh, doing veterinary work. Mm. They need to seek uh, the right people to do it, and that's the problem we are facing. Okay. Farmers are doing their own treatments, mm. and uh, it goes long most okay. times. Okay. So we are looking for the reaction. Yeah, so as uh, we can see this test, mm. we are going to test for five pathogens, the mm -hmm. five things that cause diarrhea. Mm. Just in 10 minutes, we shall be having the what? Okay. The, the results. Mm -hmm. So let's, uh, okay, we just pick with this. So we shall pick and we put two drops each. Mm -hmm. We're trying to find the cause of the diarrhea in the calf. This is meant to be a diary calf, but just to be sure what could be the problem and the cause of the diarrhea. Bran is from Zoetis, and they have all this technology. It's a kit, very affordable, very pocket friendly as well. So we leave it here, mm. and uh, it will bring, uh, it has two lines. Mm -hmm. So if it brings two lines, mm. that means there are like five channels you can see, mm. or five wells. Oh, yes. So it's testing for five uh, causes of uh, diarrhea. Okay. So when it is positive, it will bring two lines. If it is negative, it will bring one line. Mm. So as it, we shall read it in 10 minutes, so let's leave okay. it and we demonstrate the mm. ephedral. When okay. you, you want to rehydrate the calf, mm. what do you do? Now, uh, now that I know that it has diarrhea and it's well dehydrated, yes, yes. Um, how do we... I'm going to show you something very mm. nice because mm. this is a, 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 an oral rehydration salt, okay. never been in Uganda before. Mm. Zoetis has made it available mm. so that we manage diarrhea very what well. What is it called? Let me have a look at it. It's called ephedron. It's just uh, even you, you can take it by... Ephedron. Uh, when kids have diarrhea, they get some salt. Okay? Yeah, it is. It's called... One liter. Put one liter. We mix this in one liter. So it, it is good. That's for enough. It, it's good for human consumption as well. <laughs> I, I, I will test probably okay. because uh, these are just salts, uh, rehydration salts. It has okay. like lactose to mm. give energy. Mm. It has uh, sodium bicarbonate to correct the acidosis. Mm -hmm. So it's just to repair the calf. So okay. even when you look at uh, oral rehydration salts for like uh, babies, for people, yes, yes. you will almost find, find the same. same. Thing. So okay. it's safe, no problem. Okay. Eh? So this is the tablet. Mm. Many people just love it. The way it is easy yeah. to mix it. What, what one? happens? Oh, sorry, 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 sorry. It's okay. But it it's one tablet in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. So you just drop it there mm. and it will mix itself. Mm -hmm. You can see how it's boiling. Yeah. Yep. It reacts to the water. It, does it have additives that attract the calf to... to yeah, it has it? some salt, so if you just uh, give it to the calf, it mm. will take it. Okay. But sometimes it depends how sick is the calf. But for how long do I give it to it? Uh, it depends on the severity of diarrhea. So we can say two days, we give it uh, a liter in the morning mm -hmm. and another liter in the evening mm -hmm. for two days. That's okay. Okay. Yeah. So Depending on the severe yeah, condition it has. Yeah, yeah. So this is uh, uh, very nice. You mm. give it to the calf after two hours, mm. you see it very strong. You will see it uh, not it being affected by yeah. the diarrhea. Yeah. So, okay. yeah. so in terms of like when it's a virus or it's a nutritional issue, mm. you don't need to waste antibiotics. Okay. But also if it's like bacteria, mm. you need also to give it this and also give like a, a tablet. Okay. We have um, uh, Sinolox LC 
uh, no no cyanox bolus uh -huh. it's an amoxicillin potentiated amoxicillin uh -huh. a very good uh, tablet to give to the calves when they have uh, diarrhea Wow. Uh, it's also available at uh, Well, Elam. this goes to the farmer who yeah. is intentionally taking this, um, the dairy farm to a whole other new scale. Yeah, yeah. Those of you who have sent your questions um, as we're waiting for the numbers to come, let me have uh, Dr. Walusimbi uh, to join us just here briefly as we're waiting for the reactions are coming from uh, uh, the, 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 the kit. Doctor, you're just going to stand here between us so that you can actually pick off our microphones. Someone in Imbali here is saying, but I look... But look at the shelter of those cows. How much does it cost to have all this kind of, uh, of a shelter? Is it affordable to someone uh, like Harriet, who is wherever he is in the country? The issue of cost mm. goes with the capacity. Okay, again, it comes He's back. We're also planning to keep 300 milking animals in one acre. Mm -hmm. If he's planning, then he should be able to meet the cost. <coughs> okay. Yes. But this cost is mm. big because this is a public enterprise. So it is, it is but we can do with... You can do see. it with timber, mm. you can do it with the hollow sections, mm. and it will be much smaller. Okay, mm -hmm. and someone here says, this is Irene Agesa in Mbale, says, by cost input and output comparison, do you advise that we opt for local, cross or exotic breeds? What are you aiming at? Producing milk mm -hmm. or beef? Mm -hmm. If you are aiming at producing milk, mm. actually the exotics are much better. Okay. Because for them they are bred specialized for milk production. Okay. They are able to utilize feed resources mm. and convert most of the feed resources into mm. milk mm. and less to meat. Mm. That's why you find most of these are bony. Mm. Not because they are malnourished, yeah. but they are designed to channel most of the nutrients they consume towards milk production. Wow. So they are the most efficient mm. of the three choices. Okay. Yeah. Well, the conversation is still going on. Uh, let me have uh, Dr. Mwesije. Uh, doctor, please come through. We, we have a com uh, These questions came for you. Someone here is saying that, um, how do I get such breeds in bulk? Emmanuel Mwebesa is in Hoima. Well, thank you very much, Mwebesa. Thanks mm. for the concern and for watching this program. Mm. Why would you want bulk in the first place? Uh -huh. Because mm. if you are to have these animals in bulk, yeah. then you must have capacity. Okay. But I want to, 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 to give you my explanation here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is that uh, in most in, in Mwebesa's tribe, mm. a cow is called the ANT. Yes. So if a cow is called the ANT, mm. you, you need to write one letter, mm. S, and mm. it becomes the ANT. <laughs> nice. But to write that letter S, mm. it is the most difficult letter even in kindergarten. Yes. But the first line, which breed for enter to become sent. Oh, yeah. Then that slope, which is very difficult. Yes. How are you ready to feed it for enter to become sent? Sent, yes. Then the, the other third line mm. is welfare and health. Mm. How are you ready to cater for the welfare? for enter to become sent? Yes. Otherwise, if you don't write that S very well, mm. you rare enter but it won't be sent. Wow. If you're able to write two, mm. still the word will not be sent. Yes. So, who, you who wants in, to have animals in bulk, mm. first, you should be able to cater for which breed, mm. nutrition, and yep. welfare. Wow. But the quickest way to do this mm. is to enroll for the project that we have yeah. of embryo transfer technology. Okay. How but does one embro uh, enroll for that? We just sign a memorandum of understanding with you. Mm -hmm. You prepare mm. animals of around two, three parties. Mm -hmm. Then for us, we come with our embryos mm. and we insert in them for you. Now, that entire program takes just two weeks. Wow. We send a memorandum of understanding mm. for you mm. and you, you only pay after mm. they have conceived. Wow. Doctor, the other question here is, uh, I have heard of a vaccine center at that institute, the one, the early conversation. Uh, so John Mufumba uh, in Nakasake says, how is, uh, how is that, how are you going to develop and help the current level of foot and mouth disease? Now, thank you very much. First of all, with the due respect mm. to our people in doing uh, uh, the importing vaccines. Yes. The imported vaccines, but remember the FMD virus mm. has three strains. Mm -hmm. So the cocktail vaccine mm. that we, we import mm. may not contain mm. that particular antigen that uh, treats the, the FMD that is in your area. Mm -hmm. But we have the scientists in this institute mm. who discovered a strain of uh, 
FMD virus, which is not anywhere. Yeah. So he's the one going to develop a, a customized, mm. a tailor-made vaccine mm. for us here. Mm. In how long, doctor? How long should we be waiting now? Months, yeah, years, you know, ages, decades? You know, oh, thank you very much. So if the government facilitates us, mm. I, I must accept that it has facilitated us mm. well. Yeah. But if they facilitate us more, more yes. then we shall be able to quicken the process. Wow. Our scientists are young mm. and they have the enthusiasm mm. and the attitude mm. to develop. But so they need just financing. Yes. But what I can confirm to the people, mm. the anti tick vaccine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Someone was asking by, about by that. By the end of this year, mm. it will start enrolling. You can quote me if you want. We are not just going to import, mm. but because the, our factory is there, which is going to manufacture yes. it, we are going to, to bring it back. Mm. So actually, we are not importing, but because just like you have a patient, yeah, 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 he yeah. goes outside to deliver. Mm. That child is yours. Of course. So we went just to. to, to to do it there, mm. then bring it back, mm. but you're not just going to, to import. To it, it is our own, mm. by our science, mm. made in Uganda. Where will it be found? Will it be found? Now we are in the parish model. Is it going to be at the parish now level? Wha what will happen, what? depending on the government program, for mm. us, we are, we are government. Yes. It is the Minister of Agriculture mm. and Commissioner for Health mm. who, will who will decide mm. how it is rolled out. I okay. think that is beyond me. Okay. For us as scientists, it will our is be our of year. ours is to cook. Yes. How it is how it is served. It is government policy. Us, yes. Before end of year. Yeah, Those are six of, yeah. weeks from today. Yes. Doctor, we didn't give the, 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 the viewers your number because uh, Dr. Wallace we did. Please give them your number for those who need to call in for MTN 0772 mm -hmm. 367 369. Uh, which is on WhatsApp, mm. 0704 52 mm. 33 91. Zero, Musambu Zero Nya, mm -hmm. Atano Mubiri, Asatu Musatu, Chenda Muemu. But I must thank Moneta mm. and the people who have been able to sponsor this. Yeah. Our, our funders, mm. our colleagues who have been with, mm. thank you, thank you very much. Thank you so much. Well, that is uh, Dr. Mwesije Moses here. Now that uh, we have taken the 10 minutes, uh, we are back to Zoetis. Uh, that is uh, Brian. He's trying to look at the reaction, Brian. What are the results so like? The, the test is ready. Uh -huh. And as we can see, there are we two have, marks here. Uh, yes, mm. cryptosporidium mm. is negative. Yes. But lotta virus is positive. Yes. So you can see the it is the cause. Mm. So this is the possible cause of the diarrhea from the calf. Mm. Eh? So we can also see the corona. We see coronavirus. This mm. is for bovine coronavirus, not this coronavirus. My day. <laughs> yeah, veterinarians who have been dealing with coronaviruses. Oh, okay. So we have some coronaviruses, but yeah. that affect uh, livestock. Mm. But this one specifically causes diarrhea okay. in a calf. So mm. it is uh, no, no, yeah, it's negative. So mm. we also have uh, E. coli, it's okay. negative. Mm. And also Gardia is negative. So okay. it's show this test is so nice that it you is, don't need everything. to do uh, test five times. Mm. Just do it once and, and it gives you five results. So when we give, now that we know the cause and all that, when we give it um, mm. the, 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 the orals mm. we had, will it cover all this? Will, will it clarify all those? The, the good thing, uh, mm. the cause is a virus mm. and uh, you don't need to use antibiotics. Mm. So you need just to give it oral rehydration salts. Mm. It uh, takes back the, the fluids, mm. the water, mm. it corrects the acidosis and mm. the, the calf is very okay. And mm. we are saying that uh, these technologies, if mm. you want them, mm. you can get this at Elam Uganda Limited. Mm. You can go to Vet Center mm. Uganda Limited. Mm. These are the people who are mm. selling our technologies. Now, you see, doctor, when you say all those technologies, farmers are rudimentary. They want to call you directly yes. and they tell you, Brian, I have seen you on TV. Please direct me. At times, the words we speak on TV yeah. are very, we are very fast. Yeah. Could you read them the number they could possibly okay. call? Thank you. The good thing as well, we have trained a lot of experts in Uganda, mm. so we shall also link them to those experts. Perfect, yes. My number is 0752-55-93-15. And the other one? That's my only number. Okay, you now give it, <laughs> give it to us in Uganda now. Uh, zero msambu tano bidi, uh -huh. atano mutano, uh -huh. chenda musatu, uh -huh. kuminatano. Bridget, what are your numbers? At times doctor may be off, but okay. they, they, they need to call you. Okay, my yeah. number is 0757 uh -huh. 065 uh -huh. 996. Muruganda. Zero msambu, tano msambu, uh -huh. zero mkaga tano, muenda muenda mkaga. Well, there you have it. We've had the conversation. If you didn't learn today, you're not meant for this business. Because we learned from the embryo. 
where it comes from, the stages it goes through, the infrastructure, the zero waste management, the value additions and all that. And not only that, we have learned how you deal with the calves in case they have the diarrhea or the diseases, even the diseases of the artists. But not only that, I want to send a great thanks to you, the great viewer. Thank you so much for the feedback. It was Okay, the feedback was immense, it was very profound, but those who sat down and they wrote the notes from these Seeds of Gold Farm Clinic, I am sure you've not stayed the same. Great thanks to our great sponsor, that is Bank of Uganda through the Agriculture Credit uh, Facility, and not forgetting the Stan Big Bank, NSSF, and Zoetis, making sure that advanced technology and medicinals are available for the dairy farmers around the country. And to our key partners, that is uh, NARU, the National Agriculture Research uh, Organization, thank you so much. And to our great researchers, the brains here, Brian is young, Bridget is young, they're vibrant, Dr. Walu Simbi and Dr. Moses, they're all vibrant. The energy is positive. The wheel is there. And that's what we're telling you in the farm clinic. As long as you have the agriculture willing lens to learn, relearn, and unlearn, and then you learn again, you can be one of those who can tap into the bumper harvest. For today, the farm clinic is going to end here. But I want to thank our other partners. That is a nation media group. That is Daily Monitor, NTV, Dembe FM, KFM, Spark TV, and you, the great farmer. So the call to action is one, go to the research entities they have told you, they are regional. If you need to understand more of these, just go to Nali, Naliri website. They have a website, they are on Facebook, they are on Twitter. Follow them. Don't be a farmer who is just on TikTok doing all this and that. Follow the critical people if you need to tap into the dairy farm. Those of you who are worried about the market, they said the market is there. We just don't have enough to, you know, supply our market. So start small. Don't be, you know, bewildered by these big structures. You can do from the, fr from the Mbawo, Kalitunsi, and the wood, and you start a good structure. Use this research institute. Come to them. They are not going to look for you. Come for the Guayagara. Come to them, go to the research institute at the different levels, go get this information and we'll use it. Key strategies here, one, it's you using the support structure. The support structure at the district veterinary doctors and the other doctors you have at the parish level. You can use them, get this information and execute it. My name is Andrew Chamagiromuntua. Today it was the farm clinic and believe you me, it was worth the dust, the rain was worth it. You and I have actually learned. From me and the rest of the team, we want to say the farm clinic is coming in your area. For the bumper harvest, you have to be intentional and you have to put this to practice. Good evening.